Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I'm recording this on March 8th, 2012, and picking up where I left off in the last episode, what we had just finished doing is we'd actually integrated the persistence with the UI. So now, if I go into the UI, or if I go into the application and I actually run or, or do a save and type something in here, it will work. Um, now, I'm not going to do that because it will write stuff to my disk, but um, you, you will actually see that work. Now the problem is, is it was just a spike. So what I need to do is come back and do this properly in a test-driven way. So the question is, is how do I want to do that? Um, I, I, I believe we've got tests saying that this save method is called. So I don't need to do an end-to-end -end test. I don't need to actually write code or write a test that says when we click the save button the save dialog comes up and we put something in and then it calls application model save and then it actually writes it to the disk i don't feel a need to do that i actually prefer not to do end-to-end -end tests because they're very brittle they they touch so much of the system that as you refactor they tend to break and they're also slow so we don't want to do really slow tests so i want to test that application model save is calling save file dot save without actually saving anything to disk and the obvious way to do that is with mock and that's what we're going to start with but then um, I actually would like to get to the point where we're not using mock objects at all because um, they require they, they have some disadvantages one is that they are more complicated than regular test code and second is they by splitting your up your application into little pieces they make you vulnerable to integration errors. That is to say that in your test, you might say that your one part of your application is connected to another, but in your actual production code, that isn't happening. And that requires you to do end-to-end -end tests. And again, end-to-end -end tests are slow and they tend to be brittle, so I don't want to do a lot of end-to-end -end testing. But just to get this in place, I think I'll start with a mock object approach and then we'll come back and hopefully do something more clever in the future. So before I get started on that though, let's just double check that we are testing that the UI connects to the application model. Um, so I guess that's an application frame. Okay, so it does say that that line of code is untested but then we are testing do save, which should be calling the application model dot save. Yeah, we're saying save as menu should show the save as dialog and it should tell the application model to save when the save button's pushed. Perfect, that's exactly what we need. Now here's the trick. Um, Actually testing the application model with a mock object isn't that difficult. Um, but we've got this exception in here. We need to resolve, we need to handle that. So before I start writing code around save, I think I need to make application frame do the appropriate thing when we get an IO exception. And I'm not sure what that appropriate thing is just yet. Uh, let's see if we've said anything about it in our scratch pad. Well, <laughs> we said we needed to handle them, right? All right, let's go take a look at that. So that the exception handler, I think what I want to happen is if we try to save a file and we get an IO exception, then we have to tell the user. We just, we, the, the file save failed, we have to tell them. So I think the way we want to do that is inside of application frame test and application frame, when we're doing the save menu, the um, we need to do something about an exception. So what do we want to do? Well, I think this is a case where we want to, I guess we'll show a dialogue. Um, maybe what we can do is um, 
Let's let's do a little spiking here. Okay, so that's the most basic thing we could do. Now, I think this is complaining. Yes, we never throw an exception. You know, some people really dislike uh, Java's checked exception, but I love it because exception handle exceptions are kind of invisible. If you don't know the code that you're calling and you don't read the documentation super carefully, it's easily easy easy to remember uh, to miss the fact that there is an exception being thrown. So the fact that Java will actually make that a compiler error, I think that's awesome. Now you could argue that it would be better off as a warning, and maybe that's true, but the fact that it's even in there is great. Um, I think Java it's easier to make Java applications really robust as a result, although you do get some really stupid error handling like this in applications because people don't realize that it's important to handle checked exceptions. Checked exceptions, the ones that Java complains about, are the ones that are caused by problems that have occurred through interactions with the environment. Unchecked exceptions are the kind that occur from programmer error. And errors, there's a category of exceptions in Java called error, those are a result of errors in the VM itself, like running out of memory and so forth. Um, now that hierarchy isn't perfect and people don't always follow those rules, but when they're followed, a checked exception is something you should always handle well, either by retrying or fixing the problem or telling the user you couldn't do something. An unchecked exception should never occur in a real application because that's a sign of a programming error. A anyway, um, I really like the idea of checked exceptions. It's something that other languages haven't picked up because it is annoying, but it's annoying in the same way that um, compiler errors are annoying. It tells you something important about your design. Anyway, end rant, um, what we need to do is in application model, we need to say that we could throw an I.O. exception. And that takes care of all of our complaints. This should just continue to pass because... Uh, because we haven't actually done anything other than write some spike code. But now, if I do a save, that will work. And then if I, um, let's say, if I make that non-writable, If I die, I'm not sure if I actually did that right. Um, yes, replace it. Oh, look at that. There's our exception. Awesome. Yeah, permission denied. Perfect. Okay. And now let's uh, quit this. So what we've just demonstrated there is that we have the ability to force an exception. And now I want to just sort of play with how to resolve that. I think what I want to do is show a dialog. So let's go ahead and pull up Swing. And I, it's been a long time since I've done a dialog. So let's just take a look at how this works. It looks like the simplest approach would be to just create it. And then what? Title. Okay, modality, great. How does this work? Let's 
Is there a simpler? I just want a little message. Well, let's let's try this. So there we go. I wonder if I should do a, a dedicated spike for dialogues. Uh, that might be what I need to do here. Hmm. Okay. I guess we have to display it. Ooh. Oh, that's really interesting. Wow. I never would have expected that. Um, it's a modal dialogue, but my application still, my application menu still works. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, let me just take a moment to uh, application menu still works when uh, modal dialogue is up. Uh, so you can command shift, you can save as twice in a row, for example. Yep, I need to fix that, but not right now. Uh, let's get back to what we were doing, which was okay. Well, we got our dialogue, but it didn't really do what I wanted it to. So I think what I need to do here is uh, do a little spike on dialogues because I don't know how they work, and that spike might need to include how to test them. So I think. That's what I'm going to do next, but um, the last couple of episodes have gone over, and uh, I think I need to take a little break, so that's where we're going to stop now. Uh, next time, we'll look at figuring out how to create and test uh, swing dialogues so we can do this exception handling. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. I will catch you next time.